Friends, I come to you today with both good news as well as bad news. I feel it prudent we get the bad news out of the way first. You see, we have the very unfortunate task of officially saying goodbye to a dearly departed friend of ours, the Lexus GS, which was the child of Yaguchi-san, as well as the basis for the magical Lexus GSF. Now that we have that out of the way, let's focus on the good news. Uh, our future will not be relegated to nothing but crossovers and front-wheel drive vehicles because there is yet another rear-wheel drive sedan, meaning a vehicle that has the engine that goes this way, not this way, and something that is a sedan and not a crossover. So let's celebrate the life of the GSF by driving a new rear-wheel drive vehicle. Remember how there used to be a Lexus IS200T? Well, technically that doesn't exist anymore, but the four cylinder does. And here's where we get to some confusion. There are three engines on offer in a 2021 Lexus IS. There's that two liter four cylinder turbocharged engine that is good for 241 horsepower and 258 pound feet of torque. Then there is a 3.5 V6 that is good for 260 horsepower and 236 pound-feet of torque. Yes, I said less torque than in the four-cylinder. Then there is this engine here, also a 3.5 V6, but this 311 horsepower comes in at 6,600 RPM and 280 pound-feet of torque comes in at 4,800 RPM. Now, moving beyond that, there is a recurring theme that will pop up here and again throughout this entire episode, and that is the differentiation between real wheel drive. Remember, this is not an ES, it is an IS and all wheel drive. And that has an impact on disparate areas of the vehicle, first stop being the fuel economy. Now, if this were the four cylinder two wheel drive, meaning the lightest vehicle, that one also for the avoidance of doubt can do the Toyota trick. It's not just a Toyota trick, but Toyota uses it a lot of going between auto and Atkinson cycle to improve the efficiency. So that will return 21, 31, 25 combined. However, the worst in fuel economy would be one with this engine, but all wheel drive, so the heaviest car, that one would be 19, 25, 22 combined. Then performance figures, that's a bit better. One of them is very odd, the VMAX, whether it's the four cylinder, uh, the lower horsepower six, or the higher horsepower six, which this is, anything you want as long as it's 143 miles an hour. Then zero to 60, that's where we get a bit of a change. The slowest is 6.9 to 60, and the fastest is 5.6 to 60. Behind the wheel, you and I start with a bit behind the scenes today. You see, we were originally going to drive a silver all-wheel drive, same engine, but I opted for the better color, and I would argue the better combination of mechanical bits, a two-wheel drive, six-cylinder 350. And that is important for a very specific reason, the weight. This one is 33 pounds heavier with the more powerful six-cylinder engine. However, if it had the all-wheel drive system, it would be a further 100 pounds on top of that. But being you and I were patient when it came to the sweet spot of tipping the scales, now for the avoidance of doubt, this is not exactly a lightweight car, but it's the best combination of power to weight in an IS. With that, okay. Oh, look at that. There's some graphics on the tachometer there when you get into the higher RPM. What stands out here is a much different torque personality than anything you and I have driven over the past, I want to say, many years. Because there isn't a lot of torque here. You look at the numbers and you're like, that's kind of low torque for a V6 nowadays. As such, these are much more about getting up into the higher end of the usable power band figure, four to 6,000 RPM, which is highly unusual for something that's a V6 of this size. Generally, this kind of personality of engine is a four cylinder. Now, I feel it prudent you and I go through a refresher of what is underneath a Lexus IS because it is very similar to what came before it, and that is to say a good thing. Here are a couple of examples. Double wishbones up front with coil springs and a stabilizer bar moving towards the rear that's multi-link with coil springs as well as another stabilizer bar. Then the brakes, 13.2 inch diameter rotors in the front, 11.7 in the rear. And then that recurring theme of the 
all-wheel drive system. Now, this car is not all-wheel drive. However, if it were, it could send up to 70% of the torque to the rear wheels. But let's say for the sake of discussion, you live in northern Wisconsin in the middle of winter, it could send up to 50% of the torque to the front wheels. Now, the car you are looking at, yes, is an F-Sport, but it's an F-Sport that has a dynamic handling package. And that changes a couple of important things. The most obvious are the wheels. These are supplied by BBS and change the size of the wheel from 18 inches to 19 inches. Then it adds a Torsen limited slip differential in the rear, and then most importantly, adjustable dampers all the way around. Then to advertise to the world that you spent a couple of grand on stuff most people wouldn't notice or even appreciate, they tack on a spoiler to the rear of the vehicle. This one is made of carbon fiber. On top of everything you and I just discussed, there are two additional drive modes in an F-Sport with the active dampers. It's a Sport and a Sport Plus. For the avoidance of doubt, you and I are in Sport Plus. And yes, there is really good control over all planes of motion. However, if I was being incredibly pedantic, I would ask for more control over the pitch. There's really good control over squat and dive. And what that translates to is an incredibly good ride quality, which it's a Lexus. One area of improvement that I would love to see is a bit more of a delta between Sport and Sport Plus. Perhaps dial in Sport Plus where you take out a little bit of that pitch I'm feeling right now and have it drive or corner like a mid-level AMG or a mid-level M Sport car. Okay, so you and I have yet to cover that very annoying detail that this is not an entirely new car. Uh, what you are looking at is not a mid-cycle refresh, it is a heavy update to the existing Lexus IS. And you can clearly see what they were trying to do here, taking some of the design direction that was done to me, at least I see the ES and this thing, especially in the S under the car, and updating it. And yes, they updated the nose as well. And no, I do not want to hear in the comments below how much you hate the nose. I am one of the few people that likes it. Uh, but clearly, this is not just design going on here what they had to look at was the business case. And if you look at the GS getting a bolt in the back of its head, great car, but it was a shrinking segment. And they looked at it and said, the ES, kind of a similar car. And if we put an all wheel drive system in that, maybe even like a fancy one with a powerful electric motor in the rear and make it more sporty, we could kind of scratch that itch that people are trying to deal with with the GS. So the logic would follow, they would do the same thing here and others are, like literally the day before this arrived, I was reading in Automotive News that Jaguar literally put the XE out to pasture, which is the direct competitor of this vehicle. That leaves us what? The Cadillac, which itself is a heavy refresh, not an entirely new car. The BMW, of course, and then Mercedes with a C-Class, they're talking about putting a bullet in the back ahead of that one. So here's a vehicle that is, I would argue, 80% new, still a hell of a lot of fun to drive, but we still have a car that is rear wheel drive. Now, I am gonna turn this around to you and say, is this enough for you not just to consider it new, but more importantly, is it still competitive against say, a three series or the updated Cadillac or a C-Class? Let me know why you think that or why not in the comments below. So let's you and I continue that design discussion, but also add tactile feel. You hear that? That is a transmission that is connected to that gear shifter. That is something you and I don't normally have nowadays. Uh, most shifters in fancy cars like this are electronic, meaning the linkage between the transmission and the shifter is electronic to make more space, as we saw in the Rogue episode. This is a bit of a departure, and I gotta say, I really do like the tactile feel of a real gear shifter. Now, pressing on from the gear shifter, there are knobs for both the volume as well as the tuning than the HVAC system. Like other Lexus, uh, there are two ways to control the HVAC system. You can do it through the screen, which for the avoidance of doubt is larger now. I think it's 10.3 inch diagonal. So it's a significant difference and changes the look of the interior of the IS. However, for old school folks like me, there are still hard buttons down here. Now, someone in Sugasan's department has been getting very fancy here. Uh, the temperature can be controlled 
either with this slide thing here, slide up or down, or you could tap down, tap up. However, may I make a suggestion, Sugasan? Can we go back to real knobs for the temperature control? That works significantly faster and I would argue is much safer. Then some design items. The clock, I am a sucker for an analog clock. And the fact that this is ubiquitous throughout the entire Lexus lineup, absolutely a design detail. And thank you for putting it in the most basic rear wheel drive car. The only other area I would ask for specific design improvement when it comes to UX is that trackpad. It is just not safe when controlling a almost 4,000 pound vehicle, especially when the rest of the design is very good on the inside. This is the one area that's really lacking and it's a matter of forethought, control and safety rather than making it look cool like a computer. Yes, it is indeed that time again to play your favorite game of mine, the options game with today's contestant, an incredibly blue Lexus. This one, the 2021 Lexus IS 350 F-Sport for a base price of $42,900. Now I do need to point out two rather important facts. Number one, if this was a four-cylinder, two-wheel drive, non-F-Sport, the base price would be $39,400. In the opposite direction, if this very car had all-wheel drive, that would be an additional $2,000. Now we press on to the first option, which is the ultrasonic Mica Blue Pearl. Absolutely stunning. You must see it in person. You probably have if you've seen a GSF. Uh, it is a bargain at $595. However, there is a bit of a letdown. Uh, the interior of this car is black. Now, I am going to make a suggestion to Sugasan. Uh, there is a red interior on offer with a silver exterior. Uh, can we do the red interior with the blue? Now, before you look at me like I'm nuts, there is a classic alpha back there that has a very similar blue and has a red interior absolutely comes off the page. So here's my specific suggestion. How about the blue with a black interior? So black doors, black dash, black flooring, however, red seats, red door insets, and red seat belt. That would be the ultimate IS350 F-Sport. Uh, while we're on color, I do need to say arigato gozaimasu to Sugasan because there is a color, I haven't seen it, I don't know what it is, but it is Grecian water. Uh, as a Greek man, I've got his stuff. Then we press on to the F-Sport Dynamic Package. Now this is incredibly important, and yes, we did already discuss most of the bits that make up this package, yet there are two further points. Uh, number one, when one selects this, it changes the trim on the interior to a dark ash wood. And yes, that would work with my red interior suggestion. And number two, there are two different prices here depending on how many drive wheels you have. So in a rear wheel drive car, it is more expensive, $4,200. In an all wheel drive car, $3,800. Then this car is fitted with the stunning Mark Levinson 17 speaker, like 1800 watt audio system. And that's packaged with a navigation system, $2,750. Then a very important option for Kumo and I, the moonroof, $1,100. Then triple beam LED headlights, no, not laser beams, but they look kind of cool, $1,250. And then last but not least, something that is not that exciting to me, but maybe it's more exciting to you, the intuitive park assist with automatic braking, rear cross traffic alert, and blind view monitor, basically all the safety doodads, that is $1,400. The only other thing we add is the destination and handling, $1,025 for a total, wow, is that the price? $55,220. So I will come right out and just say it. There's a rather unusual transmission strategy on offer here. No, I don't say that because of the lack of a manual transmission. I say that because the car you and I are driving, the higher horsepower V6 two-wheel drive, as well as the four-cylinder two-wheel drive, uh, on offer with a lovely eight-speed torque converter automatic that when the brain in the car is picking the cogs, it does so almost perfectly. Great personality match with the engine. However, when one selects all-wheel drive, whether it's the lower horsepower V6 or the higher horsepower V6, that gets swapped out for a six-speed automatic. I gotta believe that impacts the fuel economy and probably some of the drivability. 
This is good, and I'll tell you why it's good for three specific reasons. First and foremost, it's not trying to be anything else. There were a couple of examples we learned today that absolutely proved that point. The way it delivers power, the suspension setup. Yes, I'd like to see a stiffer setup. However, there's a reason why they set it up that way. And then, of course, there is the design. Then point number two, it's a car, a rear wheel drive car, not a front wheel drive crossover. Enough said. And then point number three, the most important point for me, and that is it's a Toyota. Uh, it is not going to leave you stranded on the side of the road. I'd say you could drive it for 10 years trouble free, but I'd be lying because most likely you will get sick of it before it dies. So on that note, uh, once again, another celebration of life for our dearly departed GSF and welcome the zero birthday of the 2021 Lexus IS. Until I see you next time, hopefully with another rear-wheel drive car. Bis später.